Good morning, each and every one of you. I'm Hannah Daniel presenting in front of you my thesis under the topic Hash and Space Revamping the Traditional Handloom Culture of Chendamangala. Handloom, Kerala's largest cottage industry with large number of looms, were in existence from time immemorial. This industry comprises of a vast variety of stakeholders from cotton growers, weavers, and the designers on the Indian context. In Kerala, primary stakeholders are the weavers. The industry faces a large number of problems today in spite of a glorious past and a huge potential for employment generation as well as contributing to the GDP of the state. Kerala handloom industry plays a vital role in Indian economics, helps in the creation of ample opportunities of employment, especially for the labor class, helps in earning considerable sum of foreign exchange, thus strengthening the national economy. But this industry is facing risk and suffers from globalization and lack of upgradation. If this situation continues, this traditional industry can face a standstill. What are the things that the project is focusing on? The project mainly focuses on reviving, revamping the identity and continuity of Chendamangalam society. Why is this site selected? The devastating floods occurred during the middle of August 2018 has adversely affected the cluster of Chendamangalam compared to the other four handloom clusters of Kerala and thus the reason. In this facility, we promote a Hashan institution that provides diploma and degree courses for fashion design, including handloom, then a handloom museum, commercial units, netishalas, collaborative studios, residential units, and dyeing yards. We have also provided the community facility, which includes playground, cultivable space, pasture for cattle, Kurumbasri restaurant and an auto stand. Historians consider India as the birthplace of cotton. Handloom products in the country had attained a very high degree of perfection and reputation in Asian, Arabian and European countries. Most important ancient natural traditional industry. Now we can discuss the aim, objective, scope and limitation of this project. The aim of the project is to come up with the best of the solutions for the bring back of the heritage economy and the culture to provide platform to generate opportunities that empower the community of Chindamangalam. The objective is to formulate a project brief for solution identified issues that can be addressed through scope of architecture. Design a space that empower uplift the community. The scope the project is designed to get, cater the issue faced by the weavers and handloom sector of Chendamangalam by giving a new perspective architecturally. Limitation. Project is hypothetical, identified based on various issues observed in handloom field. Chendamangalam, one among the five handloom clusters of Kerala, produces finest handloom products with GI tag. The second largest cotton industry of Kerala that was brought to existence by Pallium family witnessed most devastating floods in August 2008. Even though they revived from the disaster, this industry demanded more attention and recreation. This project is handloom oriented revival project that helps to uplift the community economically, culturally and socially. The project extends along Chendamangalam stretch from Chendamangalam bridge to Karimpadam. The spaces include a design institution that provides degree courses and vocational training, Nitishalas, that's weaving yards, handloom museums, retail outlets, dyeing yard, collaborative design studio, and communal spaces like playgrounds, cultivable spaces, canteen by organizations like Kurumbasri, etc. In this project, renovation, conservation, and revamping of the existing building and function are involved. 
This project is intended to give an identity in a sensory manner to the whole stretch of Chendamangalam, giving the place a new visual appeal, uplifting the community socially and economically, providing adequate education and strategies, providing graduate programs for fashion design students, along with promoting tourism and trade are a major vision that upholds the project. The picture depicts designer Lakshmi Menon in the Chekuti making workshop after the devastating floods that happened in 2018. These flowcharts show the history of handloom in Kerala and India. In Kerala, there are basically two types of cooperative sector, one being the factory type and other being the cottage type. In Chendamangalam, both factory type and cottage type cooperative sector exist. The majority of the handloom sector is dominated by the cooperative society and a very few part by the private sector. The major varieties of handloom products that are available are dhotis, saris, furnishing items, lungi, medical purpose, clothes, uniforms, designer wear, and aesthetic products. Moving on with the literature case study, this is the Gangamaki Textile Studio in Bhogpur, Uttarakhand, which was designed by Bijoy Jain, Studio Mumbai, for the curator the project, which is located on the outskirts of Dradun, sitting on the lower foothills of Himalayas in the northern province of India, began with the cultivation of indigo on the existing architectural terraces. Threads of silk are treated with indigo and henna. Yak hair, wool, linen, plant fiber are collected and woven into fabric, creating a weave in tune with the seasons. The project is designed on a fragile terrain, hence the studio and associating structures are sited naturally and effortlessly along lay of the land. The beautifully crafted architecture do not overpower the landscape, yet stand distinct in the context for which the credit goes to the local residents who assisted the construction. Carefully assigned spaces and spatial transition provide a sense of openness and freedom. Moving with the site zoning, at the entrance, we have a security cabin. And as we walk, we have the utility area, then a gallery space, a workshop in the center, guest dining area, washing and dining area, farming spaces, solar panels, cow shed, staff dining and the residences. This is the site layout of the project. The project is done in a horizontal settlement manner with a lot of open spaces and space for farming and cattle rearing. There are a lot of things that has to be learned from this project. One being the openness of the project. The project is well spaced in the fragile terrain. The buildings do not overpower the site or the context. Even though all the functions are being separated and given in separate buildings, the everything together has the connectivity and a togetherness. The project has a four L-shaped studio. They are arranged around a central courtyard, giving them space to relax and do their work. The next is the live case study that I've done in IIHT Balaramapuram. The location is in Balaramapuram. And the institution is promoted by the Directorate of Handloom and Textiles Government of Kerala, Handex Process House. Courses offered by the institution are Diploma in Handloom and Textile Technology, Clothing and Fashion Technology, 
ट्रेनिंग इन वैल्यू एडिशन टेक्निक एंड फैशन क्लोदिंग पैटर्न मेकिंग एंड गारमेंट कंस्ट्रक्शन दीज आर दियर बाई एमिटीज दिस इंस्टीट्यूशन इज सिचुएटेड टूवर्ड्स द मेन रोड हेंस द एक्सेस इज वेरी ईजी The institution provides facility for graduation courses. The nearby community can also use this facility to buy dyed yarn and make final products. Classrooms have been renovated recently, but they are rigid. Each building in the site has been built in different phases and lack connectivity. This is the site layout. and this is the main road connecting namum and the atinkara the first building is the dyeing lab the second building is the weaving lab the third is the office the fourth is the classroom and the last is the business incubator The site is situated beside NH66 BC Road, which is under construction. The road has been raised two meters as part of the development, and hence the easy access to the institution is hindered. Currently, temporary arrangements have been made to provide the entry to the institution. Several accidents caused to students due to the temporary mud steps built at two meter height. Therefore, the full functioning of the institution is on hold. This picture shows the temporary setup that have been done for the entry from the main road. The road was raised two meter from the ground, mud stairs causing lot lot of accidents. Even though most of the spaces are functional, they lack togetherness and connectivity. Each building is built in different phases and seems non-harmonious. A lot of functional structures are existing without modification. Lab facility is poor in terms of volume of space, lighting, and functioning. Business incubator is functionally designed but aesthetically not appealing. Coming to our site, Chennamangalam is a handloom weaving cluster that is around thirty-six kilometers from Kochi. Known for their GI certified handloom products, even though the portion colored in red is Chenda Mangalam, the junction is located in in and near North Paravur, and this road is known as the Chenda Mangalam stretch connecting Paliam with Chenda Mangalam. For this project, I have selected two sites within a, a distance of 900 meters. The orange dots depicts the existing handloom societies, and the blue line represents the Musuris board circuit number three. Site number one has been selected because there is already an existing weaving shed of. Handloom Society H forty seven, and the site two has been selected adjacent to Handloom H forty seven, which was the Handloom Society that witnessed the most loss in the floods of two thousand eighteen. Coming to the site one, it is one point acre. This is the main road connecting the Palium Palace. and we have to take a sub road to enter into the site and you can see weaving shed and a toilet attached this is the sun path diagram the wind direction noise propagation the site is highly vegetated hence it hinders noise pollution to the surrounding houses talking about the immediate context On the north side, we have residential areas. On the southern side, we have a restaurant, and on the west side, we have the main road. Talking about the site too, this is a site of thirteen acre, and the main road connecting to Palium and Chendamangalam Junction. This site is highly vegetated. Analysis of site one: the strength. The plot has been already utilized by Handloom Society H forty seven, hence the site itself has a story to tell. Situated near the main road connecting the whole Chendamangalam stretch, 
and highly vegetated area, hence the reduction of noise generated by the looms. Weakness. The water table is pretty high. It takes good amount of time for the water to seep into the ca in case of rain. Even though the plot is highly vegetated, microclimate is too humid and hot. Opportunities. Since the plot already have handloom history, the site is apt for a museum. The site can induce tourism potential as the nearby locations are tourist spots. Since the site is only 15% utilized by the weaving shed, there is flexibility to design in the excess remaining area. Thread. Due to the presence of the tributaries of Peria River, the chances of the flood exist. But within the span of 200 years, only the flood has affected this area seriously two times. Analysis of site number two. Strengths. Adjacent to the main road, hence easy accessibility. Three-sided plot with two-side road, one-side residences. The nearby residents are connected with handloom sector. Weakness. No strong public transportation system. Even though the plot is highly vegetated, microclimate is so humid and hot. Opportunities. Create public transportation system. Possibility for horizontal development. Possibility for community facilities for local residents and tourism enhancement inducer. Regeneration. The Hashan space aims and provides the well-being of the residents of Chendamangalam. Coming to the site one, the blue line shows the existing entrance towards the site and this is the existing weaving shed. The first attempt was to redefine the access by removal of the weaving shed and giving a main entrance with adjacent to the main road and a connecting axis along with the geometry of the site. Next, I have restricted the vehicular entry towards the entrance of the site. Then I have given the moment for the viewers into the site and also to the visitors to the museum. After that, I have placed the museum as a gateway to the site. I have defined an axis. Then I have placed buildings on each side of the axis. Then I have given a trushala kind of a structure according to Kerala vernacular architecture. Coming towards the site level zoning, this is the main entrance. And here I have given the parking for the four wheelers and for the two wheelers. First is this museum space, then we have a chill out space and a Nathishala. The chill out space work as a transition area from the museum to the Nathishala. Building level zoning. First we have an entry and then we move on to the launch and from the launch we enter into the museum and we have an office attached with the reception area. After seeing the museum, people can move into the outdoor cafeteria, which is connected to a toilet and a kitchen. Also, people can move to the outlet to see what are the new designs and if they want, they can purchase from them. If they are interested to see Nathishalas, they can come and visit the Nathishalas as well. I have given the community dining area in the middle of the Nathishalas so that they can come sit together and chill. Then I have given the design unit plus storage area in here adjacent to the connecting sub road. This is the main road and you can see a sub road that can act as a service road as well. From the main road, we have the main entry towards site. This picture shows the circulation of the visitor who is visiting the museum only. And this circulation shows the circulation of a visitor who is entering the Nathishala and the design studio as well. This picture shows the circulation of the weaver who is entering from the main road. And this one shows the circulation of the weaver who is entering not from the main road but from the sub road.
This figure shows the axis of the staff from the main road. This is the service entry towards the site. This is the elevation of the project. For the material palette, I have chosen exposed cement concrete bricks and laterite walls. As you enter into the site, we have the parking area. The visitor can park their cars in here and then move into the launch. The area is flood prone. I have raised the, the building to 2.7 meter height. So as we enter, first is the launch wherein people can sit and they can take tickets for the museum. First, they enter the video tour room in which they have a 15 minute video presentation and they enter into the photography tour room from which they can see all the photographs and then they enter into the big exhibition space. These are the display units that have been arranged and there are display podiums in which all the heavy equipments of the handloom can be placed. And this is a display area. And then we have installation space. Uh, to the cafe area. Here is where I have given the common toilet and this is the kitchen. People who do not want to see the Nathi Shalas, they can directly enter into the outlet and if they want they can do their purchases and, and each Nathi Shala has a restroom, a temporary storage, dressing room and a toilet. The dining area is given at the middle so that everybody can come here and enjoy their food. This is the tailoring unit and the design studio and also the storage area. Visitor who want to visit the Nethishala can enter from the cafeteria into the Nethishala and then return back. This is the section of the museum. The double roofs have been given for the betterment of the temperature inside the building and this has been arrived from the special topic that I've chosen. Since the microclimate is too hot and humid, this was a necessity. These are the Nethi Shalas. Moving on to the site zoning. We have community facilities, residential units, beavers, collection point, academic zones, and parking. This is the main entry towards the site, and we have parking on the both sides. Also, we have an auto rickshaw stand because this is a main road, but there is no public transport facility for the people who are daily coming into the site color dyes and bringing back finished goods. As we enter into the site, we have a Kurumusri restaurant with a community hall. This can act as an income generator for the housewives and moms in the area. And also this can be used as a community hall for any functions that has to be held. Tourists also can access this Kurumusri restaurant and the other community facility is the cultivable land where the people can come here and do their farming, especially people who do not have a lot of plot in their houses to do cultivation. And also for the Kudumbusri people, they can take vegetables and fruits from this area to their kitchen. Then we have a playground area for which the people can come and play in here and also this can be a convertible ground for which in the case of floods people can have temporary settlements in here and also there are festivals like Matachanda in the Palim school which is around one kilometer from this plot. In case of festivals this ground can act as a parking lot as well. As we move towards the south side, 
of the site, we have a finished goods intake and wholesale outlet, a yarn bank, a vocational training center, a fashion institution with consisted of an admin office, studios, classrooms, and weaving labs. And attached to it, we have residence, residence facility for the faculty and the visiting guest. And also we have a design landscape and a meadow for the cattle so that the people who come for the cultivation they can let their cattle graze in the meadow. This picture shows the main road connecting Paliam with Chendamangalam Junction. The main access is given right here. And this picture shows the placement of the service road. The vehicular access have been again restricted to the entrance of the site, but the heavy vehicles can enter into the site through this pathway because of the loading and unloading of the finished goods. This picture shows the circulation of the pedestrians, student circulation, resident circulation, the access for the viewers and the customers to the site. Moving on to the floor plans, first is the Kudumbasri restaurant and the community hall. We enter to the lobby and then to the restaurant. There is also a special dining area in here wherein people can sit here and enjoy their meals. Here is the kitchen and here is the community hall which can hold about 200 to 300 people with a stage and a green room, two green rooms. This is the elevation and the sections of uh, the Kurumba Street restaurant. This is the main entrance and we enter into the lobby or the lounge, then to the restaurant and the kitchen. Next is the yarn bank. This is the yarn storage and the drying area for the dyed yarn. And here is the yarn store. People can come in here on a daily basis to collect yarn in the morning. This is the section and the elevation. For every building, the double roofs have been given to give an identity and also to reduce the temperature inside the buildings is the finished good storage and sales unit. This is a space in which the finished goods are being stored. The wholesale outlet, a dining area and a toilet for the workers and a lobby and a cash counter. Section and the elevation. This is the vocational training center. We enter from here and we have two water bodies, enter into the lounge and then to the weaving area, which is semi-open. Then we have a master weaver room, a staff room for design discussion, and a caretaking room for the mothers and the babies. The toilets have been arranged in here. There's a green wall placed in here so that people cannot see into the caretaking room. And there's a cut to the sky for easy light and ventilation. A continuity have given the laterite texture and exposed cement to every building with a ventilator detail like this with iron members to give an antique feeling. This is the plan of the classroom. We have six classrooms in total. This is the elevation of the classroom. This is the residential unit for the visiting faculties and the guests. As we enter is the foyer and towards left, we have a double height area where there's a living and a curtain glass wall overlooking to the garden. This is an open space with a kitchen and a multi-purpose space wherein people can study or discuss or do any creative 
things that they want to. And we have a work area just under the open kitchen. Then we have a bedroom space, which have a toilet facility with an open shower and a private garden. And the last is a special topic. And the topic I've selected is applied passive cooling techniques in tropical architecture. I've studied various forms, arrangements, alignments, and different techniques that can be used in buildings to initiate, to initiate passive cooling. From all this study, I have incorporated the double roofing in all my buildings to ensure that the temperature inside the building is much cooler than the temperature outside. Thank you.